everybody. Um, I'm here to talk about the top five best practices for developing your PBR. And if everybody can see my screen, we're going to talk, um, here's our agenda for today. Uh, both myself and Dominique will be sharing our presentations. And uh, we're going to talk about first developing useful SOPs, processes, and procedures, solutions for overcoming challenge in PBR sections, how to respond to feedback from the PRAC and regulatory authorities, leveraging the modular approach um, with DSUR and the RMPs, risk management plans, managing FDA submissions and waivers um, with their timelines. Uh, we'll talk about our quintile safety um, and aggregate reporting, and lastly, our Q&A um, and a contact us. Whoops, excuse me for a second. Polling question number one. Great. Well, thank you, Carrie, for that. We certainly do have a polling question that is now appearing on the screens of all attendees. The question that we have for you, does your company currently outsource PBRO writing? Of course, your uh, options here are yes or no, and you can vote on this in real time by clicking on your screen. Again, that question, does your company currently outsource PBRO writing? Uh, yes or no? Looks like most of you have voted at this point. You can get your last clicks in because I'm going to close polling now and share the results with you. And there we have it. 66% of you said no, while 34% of you said yes. And with that, Carrie, I'll hand back the mic to you. Thank you. First chapter we're going to talk about overview, um, a quick history and evolution of the PSURs and rationale for our new format. There's a history. In 1992, the CMS2 guidelines on PSURs was implemented, followed by 1996, a Step 4 ICHE2C guideline was published, uh, namely clinical safety data management with uh, PSURs for marketed products. Through to 2010, when various regions adopted the ICH uh, guidelines, through to 2003, there was a Step 4 published, which was the addendum to the ICHE2C. CR1, and then 2003 to 2010, there was business until, un, as usual. The draft ICS concepts paper for the review of ICHE2C started in March 2010, and the International Com Conference of Harmonization ICH final concept paper uh, was established December 15, 2010, followed by E2C R2, which was the PBER. Uh, step 4 version dated December 12, 2012. There's a current legal basis in the EU where we have the co Commission implementing regulations in the EU uh, in June 19, 2012, followed by HMA in June 22, 2012, that implemented the guideline of good pharmacovigilance practices, Module 7, the Periodic Safety Update Report. The objective of the PBER, also known as the Periodic evaluation report was to prevent a excuse me present a comprehensive and critical analysis of new and emerging information on the risks and where pertinent new evidence of benefit to enable an appraisal of the overall benefit risk to contain an evaluation of new relevant information that became available to the marketing authorization holder during the reporting interval in the context of cumulative information to examine whether new information is in accordance with previous knowledge of the risk benefit risk profile, to summarize relevant new safety information that may impact the benefit risk profile, to summarize any important new efficacy and eff effectiveness information, and to conduct an integral benefit risk evaluation where new important safety information has emerged. Best practice number one, I want to talk about developing useful SOPs, processes, and procedures. You want to outline the following when you're developing your SOPs and work instructions, such as a purpose, a scope, roles and responsibilities, definitions, materials and equipment, and procedures, such as generating draft line listings and summary tabulations, who's responsible for your planning meetings, developing your timelines, generating final line listings and summary tabulations, uh, generating your first draft report, routing it to QC, and who's going to review it and your stakeholders, implementing your comments, 
routing a final draft report for your stakeholders to review, implementing comments, and formatting, routing for your approval signature. And lastly, your submission, distribution, and archiving. You want to maintain referenced um, regulations and guidances that we just talked about, the E2CR2, uh, FDA regulations, as well as your uh, GVP Module 7. This is a process map for the PBER, a very high overview, um, such as PBER scheduling. You want to know your local requirements and your regional appendices that are going to be needed. Starting your PBER planning, uh, preliminary line listings, and the documents needed for deliverables and due dates. Your PBER development, where you're reviewing your line, line listings, you're starting to write your report, and then you're going through a QC, a final draft, and then your sign-off onto your uh, PBER, and then your PBER distribution, archiving, and keeping track of all your timelines for in case of an audit.